Last year, the world of boxing lost one of the greatest fighters to ever lace up gloves. It's long overdue that more people are made aware of the incredible boxing skills of marvelous Marvin Hagler. Hagler had an unusual start to his boxing journey. He was only a teenager when a local bully beat him in a street fight and took his jacket. Instead of hiding, Hagler dealt with his embarrassment by going to the local boxing gym. He would later meet that same bully in the ring and lay him flat on the canvas. This would be a theme throughout Hagler's career. Hagler would fight anybody. And if he did lose, which was usually due to some suspect judging, he would go out of his way to avenge the loss every time. Hagler brought that same grit and determination that he had as a teenager into every match he fought as a pro. And this in turn resulted in some of the most legendary fights of all time. This included the iconic fight simply known as The War, where Hagler took on the terrifying hitman Thomas Hearns and laid him flat after just three rounds. And this would be no outlier. 52 of Hagler's 62 wins came by knockout. To say that Marvelous Marvin Hagler's style was unorthodox would be an understatement. Hagler used techniques, punches, and sequences in ways that shouldn't have worked. Like an expert blues singer who improvises to create an even better melody, bending the perfect note out of tune at just the right moment, Hagler was so well versed in the rules of boxing that he knew exactly when and how to break them. Put simply, the man had no weaknesses. In a single match, Hagler could outbox his opponent with technical proficiency, or knock them out with wide swinging power shots. Or after that, he might tear his opponent apart with expert wrestling and close range infighting. On top of that, Hagler's chin seemed to be cast from iron. And an incredible work ethic resulted in some of the best cardio ever seen in the ring. But what really makes Hagler stand out as such an exceptional fighter was his ability to seamlessly blend his stance switching with perfectly timed punches. In other words, Hagler was equally proficient in both an orthodox stance with his left foot forward and a southpaw stance with his right foot forward. And his greatest innovations came from how he shifted and combined the two stances. Last time we looked at Hagler, we took a bird's eye view and took a brief look at all aspects of his style. This time, we'll zoom in closer and look at how Hagler used his marvelous switch hitting to set up traps, leading opponents directly into fight hitting punches. As usual, Hagler's style all stemmed from his footwork. Unlike a lot of multi-stance specialists, Hagler didn't use his advanced footwork to show off or taunt opponents. His top priorities were efficiency and practicality. It just so happened that sometimes the most practical and effective strategy would be to use his multi-stance footwork to punch from atypical angles. And this in turn would help him cover greater distance and generate far greater power. One of Hagler's craziest and most unusual tools for cheating distance and entering into range was his leaping Zell jab, usually thrown from his preferred southpaw stance. This setup was much like the leaping gazelle hook of Rocky Marciano or Floyd Patterson. Hagler would push off his front foot to launch himself forward, the shuffle putting a lot of weight into his lead hand. By shuffling or leaping into his punch, Hagler was able to cover a far greater distance and strike his opponents from a range where they thought they were safe. By keeping the punch straight, Hagler turned it into a battering ram that was far less telegraphic than a usual gazelle hook. The fact that Hagler was naturally right-handed made the punch even more dangerous. Although Hagler's gazelle jab was powerful enough to end fights all on its own, he primarily used it to hurt his opponent into the ropes. Most competitors would attempt to move inside, fleeing to the left 
to try to get out of the way of Hagler's right. And while this was logical, it was also exactly what Hagler was counting on. Instead of pivoting to readjust and stay in a southpaw stance, Hagler would simply turn to shift into an orthodox stance, sometimes taking a small step to cover the remaining distance. This turn shift gave Hagler just enough extra time to catch his opponent from a completely unexpected angle. Whether Hagler was fighting an orthodox or a southpaw opponent, this same tactic worked just as well to cut them off and herd them into his follow-up punch. At times, Hagler would shuffle so far past the opponent's center line that he would switch stances. From his usual southpaw stance, Hagler would move past his opponent and then attack them from his new orthodox stance. This linear shift was also a favorite of Mike Tyson's, only he tended to switch from orthodox into southpaw. This strategy worked the exact same way for Hagler, only in reverse. By putting his competitor into a stance he was completely unused to, Hagler was forcing the opponent to readjust, and he could use the extra time while they were realigning to attack them from a superior angle. But as powerful a tool as the gazelle jab was at closing distance and setting up angular traps, Hagler knew that if he relied on it alone, sooner or later, his opponents would find a workaround. Luckily for Hagler, he had more creative tactics at his disposal that helped him to set up these traps. One such method was the tried and true step through shift. Hagler would take a step with his rear foot to switch his stance, and he could do this from southpaw to orthodox, or orthodox to southpaw. The beautiful thing about Hagler's shifts is that they not only put more power and distance into his punches while he entered, they also placed him in an ideal position to set up follow-up shots from his new stance and pressured the opponents into bad positions. If an opponent got too aggressive or tried to infight, Hagler loved to shift backwards, catching anyone unwise enough to chase him from a new angle they weren't expecting and once again putting far more power into his punch through the greater shift in weight. But maybe the most absurd tactic, the one Hagler should not have been able to get away with, was his skipping step. Much like his leaping gazelle jab, Hagler would push step off of his lead foot, but this time he would also catch himself on his lead foot, hopping into a rear hand attack instead of a lead hand attack. This is almost close to a Superman punch, only Hagler used the power of his front leg to launch his punch forward instead of the back leg. The only other fighter I've seen pull this off consistently has been Manny Pacquiao, but I'd love to know of any others if you want to leave that in the comments. Hagler's skipping step was also far more versatile than it seemed, as he had the option of landing in the same stance, or stepping past the hop to shift forward and continue his barrage. Believe it or not, a lot of these tactics have been simplified for clarity. So now that we're familiar with the different components, let's take a look at how Hagler strung them all together, showcasing a few masterful sequences that resulted in some terrific knockouts. In this clip, Hagler starts in the southpaw stance and fires off a gazelle hook, enticing his opponent to move to the left. He next turn shifts into orthodox and throws another hook to keep his opponent from escaping to the inside. Hagler then skip steps into a right cross, stepping through to shift forward into southpaw. Hagler has now successfully trapped his opponent against the ropes. The opponent tries to escape, this time to the outside. But Hagler's gazelle jab is not just a great tool for entering into an exchange. It's also a great way to cut off an opponent attempting to escape. In this sequence, Hagler starts by stepping through to shift from orthodox to southpaw, creating room for a hard cross. He then uses a linear shift to move past his opponent's centerline and force him to change stances. Now that his opponent is both stunned and in an unfamiliar stance, his legs get tangled. Before he could finish turning, Hagler follows up with a crushing left overhand that sends him spiraling to the canvas. Something very funny, but also kinda sad, is that Hagler legally changed his name to Marvelous, and this is because much of the press refused to acknowledge his nickname, unlike his other contemporaries, Thomas the Hitman Hearns, 
or Sugar Ray Leonard. But as time goes on, more and more fans appreciate the sheer genius and tactical brilliancy of Hagler's style. The world of combat sports should honor Marvelous Marvin Hagler, if for no other reason than for giving us some of the greatest fights of all time, but more so for setting an example for any up-and-coming fighters.